I'm very happy to have uh, here Alexandra Giraldo Pedrosa. I hope I pronounce well. So Alexandra is a physiotherapist and a bio bioengineer researcher at the University of uh, Wollongong, right, Australia. And uh, well, with Alexandra, we wanted to restart a new series of talk from early career researchers uh, all around the world. The goal of this initiative is to promote early career research and stimulate cooperation among labs all over the world. Let me know if you want to be the next guest. For now, check it out this video. So thanks, Alessandra, for this opportunity, for being here. Thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Yeah, and uh, so, well, first thing, uh, can you introduce a bit yourself? So where uh, are you working? What are your research uh, topics? Sure. Um, so I belong to University of Wollongon, um, particularly to the school, the school of um, mechanical materials, mechatronics and biomedical engineering. Um, and of course, I belong to that part of biomedical engineering. Um, we our physio background. Um, my topics are around wearable devices and how we can improve movement. Um, currently, I'm working with older adults and gait. And I'm in my final year of my PhD. Developing wearable devices is part of your uh, PhD or you are more on testing and applying is, are there um, some collaboration with uh, maybe with others to develop those devices? Um, I do both things at the moment. Um, we of course we have the support of a team in uh, in my in my PhD. Um, but my project focuses on developing and then testing. Um, at the moment we're doing prototypes, so usually um. Is not a big system in, with integrating a lot of different um, parameters. It's more like very focused into, for example, one was swing time, um, the other one was the acceleration of the tibia, and then I do clin I run clinical trials to see if what we are prototyping is actually working or not, or if we have to change. And then the way how we provide biofeedback currently is by haptic biofeedback, which will be uh, vibrations and again um, we develop that we we design how we're going to do it and then we we see if it it works or not yeah it's... so a little bit of both <laughs> that's very well uh, at least for my experience is uh, pretty unique because you are, it seems that you have a kind of both combination of knowledge so you have uh, the knowledge as a physio but also as a bioengineer, right? Yeah. Is that, a, I mean, is something that you have learned in Australia or from your uh, previous studies? Or... No, it's, um, I think life has been showing me um, a path that I was actually not really sure, like, that I was going to land specifically in that particular um, scenario. Um, but I learned... Um, the skills here in Australia. However, um, especially due to COVID, we had a lot of issues with, um, you know, testing. And so that allowed me to go more into developing things. Um, of course, it takes time uh, because I'm not, by no means I'm like super good at, at programming. I'm a physiotherapist, but not a mechatronics, right? You can learn, um, yes, you can learn. Yes, yes. So then it's been a process of learning. And then um, also, I believe it's really important to have a lot of friends <laughs> to collaborate <laughs> with when you don't really know the answer. And you know you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, if someone does something faster than you because they are trying to do that, then, well, I, I tend to ask, OK, can you help me with this? And then we just work together. And. Uh... Yeah, for what you were saying, maybe can you speak a bit more uh, in detail about the scientific output that you already got? If you have some uh, publication already, you are in the process to write uh, papers. Yeah. 
Um, yes, so um, what we did, uh, we published already a paper where we describe one of the wearable devices. So as I was mentioning before, we are using um, FSR sensors, which basically work like um, um, foot switch. Um, so we don't really quantify the load that is going on the sensor, we just identify um, when a step is happening. And from that, we, we can calculate the swing time. Um, from that, we um, provide feedback on the swing time. And one of the things the literature tells us is that the longer the step people give when they're older adults, they, it means that they are more stable. They have more capacity to be more stable. So what we were trying to do was measuring the swing time and then um, suggesting that if we increase the swing time or we provide feedback suggesting people to increase it, then um, they will become, um, or the, the performance of the gate was gonna improve. So what we did was we put uh, some sensors that are called XSense sensors. Um, they're standardized sensors. Um, and uh, we collect data from lower limbs. And we also looked um, all the spatial temporal parameters of the gate. And we realized that, um, well, one thing was we confirmed that one single parameter could actually modify the entire gate. And then um, people were actually improving. We had markers where people were improving the way how they were walking. We realized that the device works. However, not everyone has the same outcome, which was um, telling us that customization is really important. So we can't really do biofeedback for like it's an standardized thing. It works better when it's actually person by person. But also, um, we saw as well that people were having different strategies. So some people were using the hip to give a longer step, other people were using the knee. The big two takeaways will be one, wearable devices actually in, like are able to modify a whole bunch of parameters that we can't really measure inside of a laboratory. So it's great when you are actually testing things outside. Um, and two, um, we can identify things that are happening, small changes that were happening because people had at the beginning the same gait. We analyzed baseline, everybody was exactly as kind of like there were not main differences, but two groups had different outcomes. Um, so yeah, we just feel like there's a lot to 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 research, but um, currently that's the latest paper that we actually submitted uh, last week. So let's see how it goes. Uh, Alexa, I want to understand more about your career path, which uh, I think is very interesting and uh, probably inspiring for other uh, early career researchers. So, well, can you tell us uh, where are you originally from and where uh, are you end up in Australia? Because, uh, yeah, that's what we know so far that you are doing your PhD there. How did you get there? Um, yeah, so I am Colombian. I come from Bogota and I ended up in Australia six years ago in Wollongong. Um, I did not have a clue where Wollongong was. <laughs> um, I decided to buy, once I was accepted in that university, I just decided to buy a plane ticket and then I figured out in the map where Wollongong was. <laughs> Very beautiful land, I have to say. Um, how do I end up here? Um, well, I was always really interested in how we can quantify movement. As a physiotherapist, I think it's really important to, um, yeah, literally quantify to see the if our treatments are improving or not. Of course, we have all the things that we need to check, but um, to identify the performance, you kind of need to measure. So that's how I started the journey into biomechanics. This interest came from when I was at university. Um, and I went to a conference and someone mentioned that there was a group here that was doing biomechanics. And I had the opportunity um, to be accepted in my university um, under the supervision of Dr. Winton Lee, who gave me the, you know, the chance to start. Um, and yeah, so, 
six now now six years later well i'm completing this uh, this process the conference was a international how did you which conference are you speaking about um no this conference was just an internal conference um i used to work after doing my master i did a master in physiology in barcelona but i decided that i wanted to have more clinical experience so i came back to my country worked for years but while i was working in the clinical environment and with dancers and um performers from circus because i'm really passionate about that um I was still connected to national the National University of Colombia. They they were trying to bring more people from other places and um, trying to be you know up to date with everything. And one person um, that was connected to University of Wollongong but was not working here was a person that introduced me to some people at Wollongong, and that's how I started. Actually, literally, just literally, just writing emails to a lot of people. <laughs> Um, sh showing that I was interested. So, That's... but no, it wasn't really interesting. In, 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 sorry, no, it wasn't international. It was a local conference, and some people were invited into. Yeah, uni. it's well. I, I I would dare to say that you need to bother people uh, by email or uh, in person in conferences to know them and to show what you are doing that's the first step you need to start with something yes yeah yeah definitely and i was quite persistent so i guess yeah <laughs> i can imagine i can imagine yes. <laughs> i think um i'm not really sure where i'm gonna end up um home at the moment of course it's always colombia but at the moment it's going to be australia um probably for a couple of years more as well. My partner is from here. So um, I have now some roots as well here in this country. Uh, but as a physiotherapist, being from South America, I think um, I think role models are, are, are important. Um, and, and I feel like representation is also important. And I feel like from South America, we don't really see so many people we don't have the opportunity to see so many people representing our places in western societies and so i hope that i can be able to inspire people from from my country that or and even from my land um to tell the stories that are happening there and that it's important to just to mention you know like it's not only from the western society but also we are really doing really interesting thing doing inter interesting things in as a as a region you know south america um so i try to be always connected with people um over there and and try to support whenever we can um we haven't had the chance to collaborate formally in a in um in a, a research mainly due to resources um especially when you are a student kind of I'm still navigating my way as well um but trying to to get connected um and support each other I think is really important what what do you think is missing to improve this connection with South America I think um there are pockets of things that are happening uh since um I went to ISD last year, I realized that um, there are a few groups that are actually um, working really strong, um, but I feel like we need more connection among us. Um, I also feel like resources is a main thing. Um, it's one thing going, for example, going to Japan um, for ISD, it's one thing going from Australia, and other thing completely different going from Colombia, the resources, it's not that easy to to have that access. I, I feel like it's really good. Like, for example, ISB was um, sponsoring some some yeah. people, which that gives the opportunity to you know go and show what what's happening. Um, but we have a couple of, of of things that I think with the years have been improving. Actually, like I feel like since last, I mean, I finished my undergrad ten years ago, and I've seen how. It's been changing so much the way how we are actually looking at biomechanics. Um, having, for example, literally technology, like 10 years ago, where in other places you had already 3D motion capture system, I didn't 
actually had access to any of that. And was in Australia where I've been trying to up level. Um, first years were like, I'm hungry for knowledge. What's happening here, you know? And not because, you know, it, not because we didn't want to, but we didn't have those resources. So, you know, open sources are really important as well. For example, I've seen some research groups that now they're using things that are on available online to be able to um, integrate into the classes and into the resources that they have in their research. So I think it's, that is multifactorial. It's not just one single thing that um, that's, that plays, plays that's all, around. Yeah, indeed. That is often the scenario is like in research, you don't really have only one factory that is always multi-parameter. Yeah. I believe the, my colleagues currently in Colombia um, have more opportunities and more um, access to other resources because I've seen they're doing wonderful things. Um, but yeah, I feel like for me it was actually particularly difficult that 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 part of not ha not being exposed before to actually engineering things or biomechanic. One, we're really good at observing, basically because um, we actually have a say, um, and is that um, Colombians in general in South America, we are really resourceful and we can figure out things without anything. Like, we you want a house, I build your house somehow, you know. Um, but is that thing of being exposed to those things and having someone that has a role a model role that can sometimes teach you and see you, and you can see it, what it is that sometimes is missing yes well great alexa i think uh, it was very inspiring at least uh, if i think uh, if i just recall for what you said a couple of things like uh, being uh, open to go abroad because like you did uh, when you go abroad then you need to have a big challenge, maybe language barrier, cultural, but if you don't face it, then you can really open your horizon. And uh, well, at the same time, uh, if I think at least for the scientific society, try to give more and more opportunity to travel for conferences, to give funding for a short, uh, long research visit, those things are very crucial to stimulate uh, opportunities and to make a collaboration. I think even say that we have issues with resources, I think even just being involved in what the process is in writing, for example, yeah. um, how things are, you know, it, it would be great to be able to travel to the places, but I feel like even if we connect with other people and we, we collaborate even with data, we have a set of data, let's do a collaboration. Being exposed to, for example, I think like, yeah, like say for example, undergrads or early career researchers or like people that were like that are in Colombia or in South America and the game is very different. So maybe just um, being integrated into those processes if it's the first time, that will be really helpful as well. All right, well, thanks a lot, uh, Alexa. And it was again very inspiring and uh... Well, we are looking forward to have uh, a new guest in the near future and uh, keep inspiring uh, other people and be passionate in the research, in academia. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Grazie. Thank you very much. Because PhD journey is also about sharing knowledge and uh, it's not only about working uh, by yourself uh, in a dark room, let's say. <laughs>